which ones are you answering? <laughs> I guess we'll kind of do them together, okay. don't you think? Yeah. I mean, some of them are it a joint. It is a collaboration. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So, we were um, tagged by uh, our friends D and Jess at Naturally NC, another local North Carolina channel. And um, in this collaboration video for uh, the 10 questions for all homesteaders. Um, and this was started by uh, Copper Kettle Farms. So, all right, you ready? Ready. All right, number one, what got you into homesteading? This is probably a question for you. Cause you kind of brought, that? cause you brought me into it. So oh. what, what got you into it? Um, I guess the, the food and the land are the two reasons. Mm -hmm. So the food obviously is better and um, I don't know. What's a good, I guess better is a good word, isn't it? The food <laughs> is just good. And it's something we all need. So, And there's something so rewarding about just raising it yourself. And you know, a lot of times we look down at our, pla at our plate for a meal and it's like we grew every bit of this. We, yeah, that's a that's a fun a fun realization for the first time, and and really it doesn't get old. I mean, I've yeah. heard people say that before, like, you know, the first time you look down and realize that everything on your plate you produced is so rewarding. But it really is every single time. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty in awe of that when that happens. So. Mm -hmm. And the land, I'm, I'm very interested in in. Um, you know, making our land better for the future, for our kids and their kids. So making choices that don't take away from the land, but add to it. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I kind of came along into the homesteading with you. Uh, we did, before we had this land, we had chickens um, where we lived previously. And, um, and enjoyed having eggs and we did butcher chickens for the first time there um but uh yeah just seeing you your passion for what what you're doing um and and making the land better and uh and growing our food has really um made me see the importance in it too so um all right number two what is something you want to add to your homestead in 2020 <laughs> Do we need to add anything? <laughs> I guess a baby. <laughs> yeah, we are adding a baby. Um, help. A help, yeah. yeah. Anything on? I don't think so. Uh, not, not like animals. No, I don't. I don't see us adding adding anything. I mean, we're we're multiplying. We're we're done with yeah. adding. We're multiplying now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so like the pigs will be yeah. producing mm -hmm. this year. I assume, but um, but yeah, not really adding. Um, we and I can I can put this video in the description, but um, we we did a video about how we had to downsize after last spring summer. Um, we got a little in over our heads, and um, Adam was traveling a lot for work, so we did end up having to downsize some. Um, so we've slowly started rethinking our goals and that kind of thing, and. And uh, so, yeah, I don't think we're really looking to add a whole lot. <laughs> All right, number three. What is the most difficult lesson you've had to learn so far while homesteading? Hmm, that's a hard one. Um, for me, it, it's that this kind of life takes time to see results, mm -hmm. usually. And, and things just take time. I, I was talking to some guys today about how farming in general and, and growing stuff and this kind of thing is is almost like a yearly cycle, you mm -hmm. know? So it just takes time. Like with the honeybees, you know, I can do an experiment and um, and it's gonna be a, a year before I know did it work or not, or is it something I should do again? Because they, you know, you have one chance in the spring usually to make the best of it. And um, anyway, I think that's mine. It's, Things just take a while. Yeah, I think that's with anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I would agree. I would agree with that. So I usually just try to 
when I start thinking that way, I just try to look around after after a day's work or something and try to just look at like, wow, I got quite a bit done today, even though it doesn't really look like it in the grand scheme of things. But if you just focus on the one thing you did or whatever. You know what mine is? I just thought of it. What is my most difficult lesson is is that the homestead ties us down. I think that's been oh, my, my yeah. most, that's my hardest lesson that I've had to learn. Um, and um, yeah, and I think because Adam knows this about me, Adam's a homebody. Adam doesn't really love to travel or go on vacation. I mean, he, he enjoys it when we go, but it's not something that he just looks forward to and desires. And I'm the opposite. I've always been a, a wanderer. I always like to just, um, be able to uh, see new things and new places and experience new things with my family so um yeah that was difficult this past year because it was um it's incredibly hard to leave the homestead um when you're responsible for all this and um and so it's hard on our hearts when we have to leave because we're worried we're you know we're constantly thinking about everything that's going on here and making sure we have someone responsible to take care of everybody for us but still it's like these are this, this is our responsibility so it's kind of it's hard that we're not the ones here um but i do think because adam knows this about me um and we do travel for work sometimes for farm life outfitters and things that um we just i guess we just have to get a little bit smarter about um about our systems and um and that kind of thing for example the cow like being able to uh, we're going to be milking a cow in a couple of months again and that really ties you down um but when you have a calf with the cow then we're going to be able to um leave the calf with the cow some so that we can miss a miss a milking and um so that'll make it a little bit easier but but yeah that's something that that um you know i've had to learn and working through still so um not bitter at all are you? i, I said <laughs> i was working through it i'm not like i'm not like completely like i can be i can be on the farm 24 7 for the rest of my life like that's not Okay. that hasn't happened yet <laughs> i know it's, it, that happened before we started the farm for you but i'm just saying like you know i'm doing good i, I think i'm I doing was, good it was a joke. i know um all right so uh number four what is your favorite chore on the homestead moving the cows <laughs> and i was gonna say the same thing because <laughs> when you i was scared to death to move the cows when adam went out of town um about a month ago or whatever and i mean i had to move him what three or four times it wasn't that much and um by the time he got back i was kind of like well i kind of like that you know that was fun <laughs> mm -hmm. it was it was hard work like with me being six months pregnant and moving the the water trough and and all that kind of stuff but it wasn't like extremely hard um and the cows are really good they're mm -hmm. they're i mean they love fresh grass so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it doesn't take much convincing does it no but I do, that is something that you look forward to, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what is your favorite thing to grow? <laughs> it's like choosing your favorite child. <laughs> um, I don't have just one thing. I mean, mine's like fall vegetables. Okay. If I can do that. Yeah. So turnips, broccoli, collards, cabbages. That kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm not a grower. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I want to be this year, but I'm not. A, so maybe I'll have an answer for that next year. But um, uh, number six, what do you love most about the homesteading community? What's not to love? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think... And probably everyone that's done this video and everyone that's going to do this video says this in some form or fashion. Um, but I think just having people to link arms with and knowing that they they get it, they, they know the struggles. Um, we're all kind of going through the same things, maybe at different times and for different reasons, but 
we've all got something to learn from each other and um, it's really fun just to be able to have other people that are in your corner and have the same desires and passions that you do and um, yeah I don't know how you even put that into words what you love most about them but anyway do you have another answer for that I would say work, work ethic mm, I mean, yeah that's what I love most about this community is everyone's work ethic and working together and separately I don't know yeah it just it seems to be a common thing yeah it's, you know, these days, uh, some people, well, I don't know. I don't know how to say that, but. <laughs> Are you not going to be politically correct? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> but anyway, I, I think people in the homestead community know how to work, know how to get stuff done. Yeah. And, you know, they have something on their mind and goals and they just do it. Yep. I agree. Um... Number seven, your favorite meal that you make is what? That I make? I don't know. It just says your favorite meal that you make. It could be something I make, I guess, or it could be something you make. I mean, you cook a lot of meat and stuff. I have no idea. Um, I think my favorite meal that I make is um, quiche. And mm. um, I, I don't know. Chicken and dumplings, quiche. I'm having a hard time, aren't they? Oh, they're biting each other. <laughs> um, I don't know. I like a lot of things. I, I just like, like breakfast. I just like food. Yeah, I like breakfast. Eggs and sausage. Yes. Fried potatoes. Yes, I'm not bitter at all about the eggs that we don't have right now. Mm -hmm. I do too. I really love eggs. Um, what's your favorite holiday? Thanksgiving. Hmm. Mine is always, you know what mine's always been? Take a guess, see if you know. St. Patrick's Day. No! <laughs> I, I mean, I don't have anything against St. Patrick. He was a lovely man, but. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I have always loved the 4th of July. That's hmm. always been my favorite holiday. Um, and I'm not really sure why. I think I just, I really like summer. Um, and now Sydney, Sydney was born, uh, around the 4th of July. And so we get to do for her birthday weekend, we always get to do fireworks and stuff like that. And I really, I like that. Um, but I, because I do love food and I love good food, I do love Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving might be my favorite now. So mm -hmm. it's a tie. Um, all right. Number nine is your homestead where you intended to settle permanently or are you looking to um, settle somewhere else, elsewhere? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I've never heard you say that before. <laughs> that would have been a complete shock to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't see us moving again, but you know, you never know what the future holds. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, yeah. you, you can make plans and, and we do make plans, but um, we're planning to stay here. Yeah, as and of right now, I don't see us moving. Yeah. Like we're at least, I feel like I work hard at trying to at least have an opportunity for our kids, whether that's land to build a house or to farm or whatever they want to do. So. Yeah. Yeah, he thinks a lot about the future and, and having a place for our kids, so that's important. Um, Number 10, last question. What homesteaders do you follow and enjoy learning from? It's a long list. Mm. <laughs> I didn't mean to punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it goes. Um, I, like YouTube. I guess just any, anyone. Um, I mean, well, Joel Salatin was the very first person you were exposed to, I guess, that yeah. that really got you interested in different farming practices and stuff. So, mm -hmm. but um, I guess right now, at least on YouTube, I learn a lot from Greg Judy. Mm -hmm. He's out in Missouri, and he runs a, a cattle ranch. He has I don't know 300 cows or so, but 
I really enjoy watching his videos and learning how he does things and anyway that's probably who I who I learn from mm -hmm. the most is him right now and I mean we've got I mean we really could just stand here and list a bunch of people that inspire mm -hmm. us or or that we enjoy learning from um, yeah um, but yeah yeah there's a lot there's a lot of people who are very inspiring and are doing very similar things and yeah. it's always nice to watch them and I guess because we have that in common yeah you can see our our wins and our failures mm -hmm. and it's always good too to like I mean you know they say in business like you need to be following you need to be making relationships with um, reaching out to admiring people who are where you want to be or you know people that are doing something mm -hmm. um, admirable that you that you really like and you can see yourself doing it's good to make connections with those people and um, and to really just kind of study what they're doing and how they're doing it and everyone's going to do things differently but um, there are so many homesteaders to learn from for sure right now especially with the you know YouTube especially mm -hmm. with with having YouTube available for people to, to watch and um, get ideas from so all right so that is the um, conclusion of the 10 homestead questions um, we would like to challenge a few other channels also um, farmer me Jennifer um, that's her channel uh, Haley at Mountain Heritage Homestead Megan at creating essence and um, our friend Amy at the Fuel Homestead. So um, if you guys would do a video on your, um, all these lovely questions for you to answer so we can get to learn more about you, um, then that would be great. So the pigs are going nuts. <laughs> oh, it's because the kids are over here. I was like, why are the pigs going nuts? So um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for hanging out with us and learning a little bit more about us. And um, we will talk to you later. See ya. Bye.